How many of you have experienced an episode where your back gives out on you? The answer is over 80% of you that are watching this video. So let's talk about the causes and solutions for this extremely common lower back problem. 32 year old female came to my office with complaints of lower back pain that began about six weeks ago. She was folding laundry, bent over to lift the laundry basket and felt a knife straight in her lower back. Pain was so intense that she could not move and she had to lay in the floor for relief. She tried backrest for a few days and started some physical therapy at the recommendations of her primary care doctor as well as anti-inflammatory medications. Her pain seemingly did get better, but she ended up getting an MRI due to persistent symptoms that showed this finding right here. What we're looking at is a sagittal MRI scan. So the patient is facing this way and we're looking at the spine from the side. So her belly is this way and her back is this way. And right here is the spine. Each one of these squares right here are the vertebral body or the bones that are in her back. And these lighter gray rectangles are the disc or the little cushions that sit between our bones. We have bone, disc, bone. But this disc does not look like all the other discs. It's a slightly darker color, but you see this bright white spot right here. What exactly is that white spot? It's an annular tear in her disc. Let's talk about the anatomy of the disc and how an annular tear can possibly happen. If we take our spine and then look at it straight down, we'll be able to visualize the anatomy of the disc. And it's full of many rings that is called the annulus fibrosus and then the inside of the disc is called the nucleus pulposus, and it's a really squishy-like material. Think of it like a jelly donut. You've got the inside jelly, and then you have the outside, which holds all of that inside material inside of it. And if you tear that outer coating, sometimes the inside or the nucleus can actually leak through and herniate, and that's called a herniated disc, or a slip disc in your lower back. That can cause back pain and sciatica or pain that radiates down your legs. But our patient didn't have a herniated disc. She just had this isolated tear. That tear can be a partial thickness or even a full thickness tear, like in this picture. The outer components of the annulus is a highly innervated substance in our back. And if you tear one or more of those discs, it can be quite painful. Some tears are the result of trauma, like in our patient when she picked up a heavy laundry basket. And some of them are degenerative or happen over time. The problem is that annular tears are slow healing because the vascularity to this part of the spine is pretty minimal. Blood circulation to that part of our spine is pretty poor and it can take a long time to heal and sometimes it doesn't even heal at all. That's why people that use nicotine products have a higher rate of accelerated degenerative disc disease because their body doesn't really have good capability of healing their discs. Remember, nicotine is a potent vasoconstrictor, so it reduces blood flow to an already poorly vascularized part of our body. As one of the answer choices in the original video, I mentioned that it potentially could be a muscle strain. However, muscle strains most likely improve in one to two weeks and do not cause abnormal findings in the disc on an MRI scan. Okay, doctor, so you're telling me that I can damage the disc in my back, but how can I heal it? The good news is that most people do heal their discs with conservative treatment, but it will always be susceptible to re-injury. That's why it's extremely important if you've ever injured your back that you're more cognizant to prevent injury to your back again. Next, let's talk about treatment and prevention. It's extremely important in the acute phase, right when you injure your back, that you don't do anything that could potentially injure your back more. That means being incredibly important to adhere to the BLTs. Just think a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Bending, lifting, and twisting. Try to avoid excessive bending of your back, like leaning over to pick things up off the floor. Exaggerated side-to-side -side twisting of your back, like tennis, golf, mopping, vacuuming, and lifting means avoiding lifting objects that are over 10 to 15 pounds. Remember, any excess weight that you carry is delivering that load directly on your spine and your injured disc. 
physical therapy is a mainstay of conservative treatment for acute lower back pain. And for an annular tear, I usually recommend someone that follows the McKinsey protocol. Medications like NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications can help reduce inflammation in the area and help reduce the pain. There are other medicines that can be utilized such as muscle relaxers, Lyrica or gabapentin, as well as pain medications. Massage therapy, stretching, and chiropractic management can also help. All of the things that I just mentioned are to help reduce the pain while your body is naturally healing that tear. If the pain is incredibly extreme and debilitating, or if it fails these conservative treatments that I just mentioned, we often will recommend epidural steroid injections to help with the pain as well. What that does is directly inject an anti-inflammatory medication in the areas where the inflammation is prominent by the disc. If there's not a lot of inflammation in the area, these injections may not give any relief. But no pun intended, it's usually worth a shot. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. There are newer treatments that are up and coming, such as stem cell treatments for discogenic back pain, but the evidence-based literature is lagging at this time. That's why most insurance carriers do not offer this as a covered procedure. But it potentially could be worth exploring between you and your physician. Surgery is almost never needed for an annular tear, but may be reserved for those that fail conservative treatment for over six months. Lumbar disc replacement or lumbar fusion can often be utilized to help these patients that do fail exhaustive conservative treatment. Essentially what we do is go into the spine, remove the entire damaged disc, and then replace it with an implant that preserves mobility. This can be an excellent option for some patients. Let's talk about the most important topic, prevention. Here are five things that you can do to help lower your risk of injuring your back. Number one, avoiding nicotine products for the reasons I described earlier in the video. Number two is maintaining a healthy body weight because any excess weight that you carry on yourself is also carried on your spine. Number three is exercising regularly. And four and five are tied into that. Four is maintaining a good solid core strength because your core is so important and is the foundation of support of your spine. There are four core muscle groups that you need to focus on, including your abdominal muscles and your back muscles, but let's not forget about our pelvic floor and our diaphragm. Think of those muscles like a home and how it supports the inside, which is your spine. Would you want a brick house or a cardboard box? You know the answer to that. And last but not least is stretching. Stretching can help keep your spine loose and limber and prevent injury. It includes things like yoga and Pilates back to our patient. She's a 32 year old woman and what I didn't mention is that she's recently postpartum so all of her core muscles including her abdomen and pelvic floor are incredibly weak. You're pregnant, your abdominal muscles get stretched, your pelvic floor muscles also get strained and you put on a little excess weight. We had her get in with a good pelvic floor physical therapist and work on all of those core strengthening exercises. And over a period of about three months her pain gradually improved. She did not need any injections or any surgery. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.